song is called Terra, and this would Terra. be the first one that you, essentially that you wrote for the album. You didn't write it for the album. Right. It was the first one that you wrote that was on the album. That that that, that it was the first song that I wrote that you guys started like saying like yeah we could play this. We should do this. We'll yes. Do this song. This, yes. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. I wrote it over a long time. Seems too. like it. I wrote it like I remember writing it at the beach. And you, it's the first verse is, is all all beach stuff. Oh yeah. And then part of it I wrote while I was in Japan. So. The one lyric is the golden crow is red at midnight. That's directly from a like a painting I studied. I took a Zen Buddhist uh, art history class, and so there's this painting, and it had this this poem: "The golden crow is red at midnight," which is referring to the sun. Right. I don't really know why, but I thought it was cool, so I was like, I got to put that in there. Terra. I mean, it's about Earth. It's about it's kind of a hippie song. It's a good old good old hippie song for the Irish folk to play. Boy, it's got a lot of words in it. I'm glad I don't sing it. This is actually one of the... This is the only song on this album that, in a pinch, I could not just sing. Um, I could probably get 80% through it, but I don't just don't know the words because I'm playing whistle and I'm not, I'm not paying attention. Well, I know the words, and we were talking about this the other night, is that I don't, I, I don't play this when I'm in New York because I don't... I, like, never know... Even when I originally wrote it and, like, gave it to, like, Chris, Chris was like, well, I don't know what to sing because... Are you singing the main part or are you singing the third? And I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> right. Every time I would just do it differently. And so now I still I just can't decide which one I actually think sounds better as like the main part. If there wasn't a harmony, which one's better? Which it would seem like it's the melody, but actually I don't know if it is. I just don't. And I think it just sounds better with two parts. Yeah. And uh, so this song is in terms of recording is layers upon layers upon layers of Bazooki. stuff. Bazooki was the the secret instrument. It comes in in the in the, in the refrain. It's just cool because yeah. it's, it's just a giant mandolin basically. So it adds this really low end in contrast to the right. And you don't know that it's there until it's not there. Mm -hmm. This was a really fun one to play whistle on. This was one of my favorite er ones to play whistle on. Yeah. Um, and the the whistle the first whistle solo is really good. And I wish <laughs> I could take credit for writing it, but I, but Benji wrote it because he took three takes that, of three different takes that I did and pieced it together into a really cool melody that I then had to figure out how to play. Back to the Japanese thing, there's one, there's a Japanese word in it in the last verse, you say yugen, which is a great way to describe the song itself. Great Japanese word that means the feeling that you get when you look up at the sky and you realize how like what everything is so huge it's that feeling you get in your gut so you you know we don't have a word for that i was gonna say there's not there's even no close English words word i can't even think of that but it's like that it's almost like dizzy like whoa that's cool yeah and that's what the song's about i guess <laughs> i just like that it's like a, a north carolinian writing irish songs about japan yes trees fly by and we are standing still Sarah, kiss me on my cheek, we'll never die, we'll never sink, the ripples in my mind are never... 